Hello, everybody. So this is the second episode, and this is Havana Syndrome and Iranian Schoolgirls Mass Poisoning Reports. We're actually going to be talking about an article I wrote for Skeptical Inquirer, which is called Iranian Schoolgirl Gas Attacks and Havana Syndrome, a conversation with Robert Bartholomew. And both of the subjects there, which is Iranian Schoolgirl Gas Attacks and Havana Syndrome, have their own Wikipedia articles with those names, and you could look those up too. Um, so I'm going to ask the people on with me, as well as those listening and watching, what do they think these two situations have in common? Situation one. Beginning in late 2016, the U.S. government claimed there were ongoing attacks against its embassy personnel in Cuba by unknown forces using unknown weapons. In subsequent years, the scope of these claimed attacks brought in to include intelligence agents, other government officials, and even family members stationed in a very, very long list of countries, eventually even happening on the White House grounds. The symptoms of these attacks were collectively eventually called Havana Syndrome, and they included everything from brain fatigue to brain damage. Uh, the mysterious unidentified weaponry blamed for these attacks included ultrasound, infrasound, pulsed electromagnetic energy, microwaves, and a bunch of other things. So that's the first situation. Situation two. In November 2022, just a few months ago, reports surfaced about a poison gas attack at a girl's school in Iran, affecting 200 students. Reports of gas attacks then happened all across the country of Iran. As of early this year, the count of victims stood at nearly 7,000 young girls. The victims were mostly girls. There were some teachers and, and extraneous victims, but mostly schoolgirls. It was at, at over 100 schools in nearly that many cities. So speculation ranged, like, like who could have caused this? Well, uh, it, the villains ranged from either the Iranian government seeking revenge for the recent and ongoing uh, hijab protests, or the government said it was a false flag operation by people who wanted it to look like it was the government doing it, right? And of course the government made mass arrests. So what do you folks think these two situations that sound nothing alike have in common? Helen? Um, hysteria and um people jumping to conclusions for no good reason, the usual, the usual, the usual stuff. So um, what, when I read this article in your notes on it, Rob, I really wanted to see like if this was an actual thing. So I decided to do some um, other research on Havana syndrome and there is actual legitimate study into what it could possibly be because there were um, US military personnel that were reporting similar symptoms. And it over there was over a thousand people that reported having symptoms of what they thought was Havana syndrome. Now, um, there's a d bunch of different theories out there. Um, there was a review done by um, um, by Yale at the MedRx IV review that talked about Havana syndrome among amongst Canadian diplomats and the symptoms that they suffered. There was another one that was done by um, there's a a prof a uh, researcher that's part of um, Northwest Western University that is also looking at this um, as a cause from um, a, of a certain type of cricket. Now I'm not, and they're just looking at all possible avenues of what this might be. Am I making a statement on anything about that? Like this, you know, what the actual cause was? No, but we, but we as skeptics like to explore as many things as possible of how to explain this issue. But I do want to point out that the um, government, our U.S. government decided to um, paint it as, you know, it was a biological attack against, um, you know, the United States and um, people that we're associated with. That's gross. So um, this is a lot more complicated than we're going on about. Um, but there is this is a conversation we need to have. So um, I do have more to say about this, but I really want to pass it to Jimmy and give his, his kind of perspective on this article, on um, Rob's work, the article, and you know his kind of perspective on things. Sure. Um, so I think that. Maybe, maybe the no good reason thing, while that's valid, there what we fail to to 
accept or, or maybe investigate is that there are some other reasons on the fringe that maybe we don't we don't uh, go over enough. So, uh, for example, uh, in the military, I, I had 13 years of military experience and I've been overseas and I have to plagiarize uh, Jason Sherwood uh, when we first talked about this issue back in March. But he he was in the military as well and he would traveled overseas. He drank the water and breathed in new environments and things like that. And, you know, felt some physiological effects from that. Um, so that is, is certainly probably, probably a case in, in at least some of these that we could uh, attribute to some of these symptoms. Um, I think also, and, and I hate to say this because I love our military, I'm still in the military. Uh, but some people kind of just make this stuff up. They hear about something going around and they figure, Oh, that's what I got, you know, uh, and and maybe there's some nefarious purpose for that. Maybe in some of these circumstances, they figure, oh, well, I'll get uh, I'll get some kind of maybe I'll get some time off or maybe I'll get some uh, ben medical benefits when I separate from the military. So these are, are also some possibilities. I do. I, I dare bring them up because I do think they are fringe. Um, most likely, I would say that these reek of mass hysteria. Um, and I think that when you have a group of diplomats that are feeling something, then it's likely to encourage other diplomats to maybe say, well, well, maybe maybe that's what I'm feeling, too. Maybe we actually uh, are under attack when in reality, you know, it's 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 something else completely. And uh, I think that these two stories, when we talk about the the Iranian girls being poisoned and then the the U.S. diplomats slash military members, uh, they do have two kinds of things going on. So uh, the mental effects and the the physiological effects uh, that associated with mass hysteria and um, the other, uh, I, I it escapes me right now what what Rob Bartholomew called it, uh, but basically uh, it happens a lot among close knit groups, and I think functionally the diplomats have kind of this close knit tie to one another right so they perform the same job they're going through the same things they're they're separated from uh their natural environment while the the girls in uh these schools they have more of a close knit uh close knit relationship in proximity and so i wanted to point out that difference and um yeah see what you guys wanted to say about that aaron what do you think uh, I'm not a scientist. I don't. I don't understand this. Yeah. Um, this stuff too well. Uh, I, I know that the technical term, I guess, on Wikipedia for this is is called mass psychogenic illness. And yes, psychogenic yes. psychogenic means it comes from your brain. Um, and I really, I kind of wish this was was this most used. Uh, what's called mass agnostos illness. I just made that up. I just coined it. Uh, agnostos <laughs> is you know means unknown. Because we don't honestly, we don't really know from what I've from what I've read, we don't really know where this is coming from or why. It's really complicated. Mm -hmm. Our brains are super complicated. They do weird things. They do weird things by ourselves. They do weird things when we're together. We're I think we're barely beginning to understand how our brains work, how we work together as communities. Um, if we look back a hundred years from now at the mental health and the and regular medical care. It kind of seems barbaric the things people did, and people are gonna look back on us in a hundred years, and kind of say they did what to to treat this, or they didn't understand this. So I think we have a lot to learn, uh, and the difficult thing about this particular thing is it's really hard to reproduce in the lab. Like you can't do a study, mm -hmm. and, and at least I've never heard of of somebody, uh, you know, trying to get people to experience mass psychogenic uh, illness. Uh, so you have to kind of uh, explore it in the wild. So you have to go out and, and find out when it's happening and do lots more work and try and figure out root causes and patterns and things like that. It took us thousands of years to figure out, uh, discover germ theory and that germs were a thing, bacteria were a thing, viruses were a thing, and that's what caused illness. And maybe it's going to take us another few thousand years to figure out what the heck is actually going on uh, with this. Rob? Well, so I have written about this and investigated it since it started in 2016. Um, Jimmy mentioned Robert Bartholomew, so I've interviewed him several times. We actually communicate about these things. He's the guy who told me about it. He said, did you know what's going on in Iran with the poisonings? Because it really wasn't covered very well in the news here. So that was the first I heard of that. Um, I have worked extensively on both of those Wikipedia articles using putting the scientific consensus on it. 
uh, meaning the skeptical perspective, because there was none. The Havana Syndrome article was initially called Sonic Attacks in Cuba, right? And the Iranian schoolgirl poisoning reports name of the article on Wikipedia was poisoning, schoolgirl poisonings, as if it was real. And there was no question that these were real, right? But there were people saying that, oh, there's problems, there's red flags here. And none of that was on the page. So me and the group of people I work with, the guerrilla skeptics on Wikipedia, who put uh, more scientific information on Wikipedia and fight pseudoscience, you know, worked on those articles. So yes, uh, mass psychogenic illness is likely for both of those things. And I'm going to read the Wikipedia description of what that means. So mass psychogenic illness, also called uh, mass psychogenic disorder, epidemic hysteria, involves the spread of illness symptoms through a population where there is no infectious agent responsible for the contagion or weapons. It's the rapid spread of an illness, signs and symptoms affecting members of a cohesive group originating from the nervous system disturbance involving excitation, loss, alteration of functions, whereby physical complaints that are exhibited unconsciously have no corresponding organic causes that are known. And one of the terms I think Jimmy was searching for might have been hypervigilant. Like if, if you're if you're looking for something to happen, the smallest thing that happens to you, which may have nothing to do with anything, it's just a random occurrence of life, you now associate for this. And Helen mentioned the crickets. Well, they weren't thinking that the crickets caused the illness. The thing was, some of the uh, original attacks, which happened in Cuba, hence mm. the name Havana syndrome, when people started to think they were being attacked by sonic weapons, started to record those sounds. And then many months later, might've been a year later, they finally got to etymologists, the people who study insects, and it says, oh, mm -hmm. that's just the sound of the crickets in, in Cuba. This is a common mm -hmm. sound. But And those people probably heard that all the time they were stationed there and never give it a second thought. But as soon as they were told by the United States government that other people were being attacked by sonic weapons, oh, wait a minute, I heard that noise and I felt a little dizzy tonight. And then you make a report. So that's the most likely explanation. And the mass poisonings of schoolgirls in in uh, Iran. Unfortunately, there have been these through recent history. You can go back a decade, then two decades, and three in different countries. And it very often, if not exclusively, is in Muslim majority ruled countries, and it's always of schoolgirls. And there's something about if you if you're in an environment and you're in a population that has no control, and you feel that you can't control things and you're under other people's thumbs. As happened to the people in Cuba, by the way, because they were in hostile territory, always under surveillance by the Cuban government. I mean, that's a real thing. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. so you put two and two together and then the smallest thing, illnesses of life, you get tinnitus, you get a really bad a headache and, and you feel that it's because of this one thing. Helen? So, um, I want to emphasize that I was not making a claim. I, I just wanted to point out that there might be other avenues to explore because that's one thing you have, because we've all heard the person that claims that they know the truth. And then we find out later, they were like, nope, you had a mass, his, mass um, psychosis. Um, this act, what you thought it was, wasn't actually what it was. And also um, there have been um, people that have illnesses that can't be explained and they're brushed away. And then we find out later that it was actual legitimate illness. So, and these things are very hard to suss out. And the reason why I'm playing, I was kind of playing devil's advocate because I want everybody to understand that you kind of have to in these certain situations and really do the work because we are very reactionary. We hear a new story or a, um, a conversation that aligns with our ideas and how we think things go, but it may not actually be truth. And you have to look at all avenues. And one thing I really appreciate about the stuff that I kind of, I, I looked up was that people were looking for alternative explanations. Ultimately, if it leads to a mass hysteria sort of thing, that is an actual cause for what is going on, but it's not anything external. This is group, group psychology, group think, you know, um, cause every, we all do this to a certain extent because we're empathetic creatures and, and it will happen. And I really like what you mentioned about, um, this was happening to Iranian school girls. Cause the first thing that went into my brain was the Salem witch trials where we had a bunch of young girls 
you know, claiming to see demons, claiming that they are possessed and writhing on the floor. And, you know, because if you look, if you're young and you live in a repressed society and you're an upper underrepresented sex, you're, and to get attention because these girls were given attention. So let's just flip it and we'll move it to, um, Iranian girls living under a suppressive government where they don't have a voice and now they're suddenly getting attention and you're going to feed into that too. So I think that's something we should, we should explore all avenues. And that was one of the things I wanted to bring up when we were talking about this article, Jimmy, do you have any further thoughts? Yeah, I do. So that is actually a great point. So you, you kind of have to take this stuff seriously, don't you? Right. I mean, even, even if there's kind of no telling what it could be, uh, you, you can't just ignore it. And so I think, you know, it being unexplained, but but still reporting it and having these kind of mass accounts of not knowing what's going on uh, is is a necessary thing. I think as a society, we dealt with it in COVID. I can't even tell you how many people I sent home uh, from work because they just were like, hey, I think I lost my sense of smell. And it's like, OK, well, uh, congratulations. Take five days off of work, you know, kind of thing. And you have to just treat it seriously because, you know, uh, we, we just don't know what what it, what we're dealing with sometimes. Um to Rob's point, you know, members of a cohesive group, you know, dealing with this or, or experiencing these things and uh, and us knowing, you know, just as a society in general or just as like, you know, people who have an expertise on this, uh, knowing that cohesive groups, close knit groups uh, like Rob Bartholomew explains in both in, in these articles uh, experiencing this. This goes all the way back through the Middle Ages. Like we were people were dealing with this, you know, when the plague broke out. Uh, everybody had the plague, even though they didn't, you know, and, and we see it now, you know, people who speak in tongues and people who shake on the floor because, uh, God's in the room with them doing whatever. Uh, and so I think it's kind of interesting that we can come up with conclusions of mass hysteria for things that are like non-religious almost. Uh, but then when it comes to religion, people are, are a little bit hesitant to accept mass hysteria as the cause for some of these experiences. And I just kind of wanted to inject that to tie this back to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, religious and, and skepticism and atheism, because I think it, it holds weight there. Um, and so those are my final thoughts on that. Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. Up. Do you ever, do you ever feel sicker when someone else around you is sick? Like maybe you cough yeah, a little bit sure. more, yeah. or you, your throat's a little scratchier when someone else, you know, is scratchier. You feel like you have a fever when they have I'm a fever. legitimately sick, Aaron. Don't tell me I'm having psychosomatic <laughs> oh. symptoms, okay? <laughs> oh, that no, one's sick too. Oh. No. <coughs> and that's a great word, psychosomatic. Our brain and our bodies, it is connected. And our brain can make us sick. If there's, there's no virus, there's no bacteria. Our brain can do wonderful, amazing, crazy, stupid, dumb things to the rest of our body. Um, and like I said earlier, we're, we're just kind of beginning to understand that connection and what that means. And as my, and, and I just have to point out, uh, I found this out and it just cracks me up. I don't know why it cracks. It's, it's kind of dark humor, but the, the word hysteria comes from, uh, a Greek word hystera, which is the mm. word for womb in Greek. Yeah. Oh, and sexism. There you are. <laughs> Every time I hear the word hysteria or hysterical, I just kind of have to go, oh, English. Oh, English language. You poor thing. <laughs> Rob? Well, so that, interestingly, Aaron, is one of the reasons that people who are trying to diagnose this and uh, don't understand what mass hysteria actually is, uh, they basically say, oh, they, they can't be making these things up because they have real symptoms. And you're just saying they're hysterical or you're saying they're insane. And, and that's not the that's just not the case. Uh, that was actually said by Marco Rubio in the uh, 2017, I think it was, investigation of what was going on in Cuba. And, and he refused to believe that that diagnosis and people were actually thrown off medical committees, doctors who said we may be having to look at mess hysteria. No, 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 it can't be that people aren't making these things up. We, you know, and, and that person likes thrown off the committee. So that's largely the reason why all the initial, uh, you know, reasons for this happening were put at microwave weapons and sonic weapons, even though physicists were saying none of that makes any sense. And the last thing I want to say on this is a you know, good point. This has happened through history. Um, 
I'm going to just rattle off a few things. There was a thing called the glass harmonica in Benjamin Franklin's time. It was a, it was a musical instrument that people initially loved, and they thought the sound was making them healthy. One of the one of the uh, musicians playing it got sick and died, and then all of a sudden, the belief was the sound was killing people, and the instrument disappeared within like a few years, oh, because brain. you know it can't make you oh, good and make you bad. Yeah, pretty bad. The, you know, it was the Martian invasion of Earth. Everybody remember that, 1938. People smelled the gas coming off of the Martian weapons, you know, uh, and it was a radio play. Um, when the telephone was introduced, the initial operators were getting crackles in their ears and they thought they were getting brain injuries from it. And, you know, they may have been getting sick, but it wasn't from the crackles in their ears. So there's a lot of connectivity in these things. And the thing is, it's a very hard thing for people to accept. So finally, I'll say the U.S. government actually made an act called the Havana Act. And, you know, th that actually stood for helping American victims afflicted by neurological attacks and Biden signed it. So that, that put it into U.S. law that this is a thing, that there was neurological attacks affecting U.S. citizens. Of course, they acronymed it. Of course, everybody loves an acronym. <laughs> so if you want to learn more acronyms and learn not to suffer from mass hysteria, Click above you and see some more nonprofits. <laughs>